שלום עליכם, מלאכי השרת, מלאכי עליון. מי מלך מלאכי המלאכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. Can we move on? Yeah. Now our favorite portion of the week. Our updates on the Rabashkin kids. I can't wait. Can't wait. All right. For those who don't know, I got to mention, this is the Shalom Rabashkin Ag Processors Case Central on the internet. This is the place that everyone is turning to to get information about the Rabashkin cage. We are huge right now. in the inner circles of, of the Rabashkin team, if you will, of his inner circles and their, and their legal counsel, and everybody's aware of us, like, we're huge. You realize how big we are? No. We're big. I, I'm just studying Toro day, and I think about, oh, how big am I? Oh, I'm so big. Oh, I'm really, really big. <laughs> okay. I'm thinking about the Toro is big. Okay. The Toro is so vast. Hashem is the biggest big out there. That's what I'm thinking about all day. I know. Well, not all of us are at your level. Exactly. Okay. And, and just letting you know, we're big. And everyone who has information that's uh, relevant to the Rubashkin thing that hasn't been come out to public light yet, they're coming to us, lady. They're coming to us. We are uh, apparently God's chosen uh, uh, re uh, repository for information It's vital to the case. They're coming to us, lady. Mm -hmm. And like every week, I say, well, I think we're done with this. And then every week, like, you know, more information comes to us. You want to hear what came this week? What came this week? We got a couple of emails, lady. You want me to read them out? Exactly. All right. This is where, by the way, if you have information, don't be shy. Send it to us. We're, we're not going anywhere. We're starting our second year. We're going to be here. Around, we're going to be around. We're, we're going to be syndicated. We're going to be around at least five years later. Exactly. <laughs> we're gonna be, we're gonna don't be, play the highlights, son. Yeah. So set, yeah, we should come up with a, 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 a Greatest Hits album. <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of do. Oh, okay. So... And call in, folks. We're taking calls. If <laughs> you know myself, I'm not for it. Yeah. So, call us. Send us your information about the Rubashkin thing. We'll, you know, we're reading it on the air. So we got two emails this week, lady. I'm going to read them out, okay? Okay. All right. One is from a... I don't know how to pronounce I don't know if it's Rachel or Rachel. I think it's Rachel just because she sounds very from. So I'm going to go with Rachel, because you, know, you can't get a pronunciation on an email. So let's say it's Rachel, and she writes, and I'm going to read it to you, okay? Dear Rabbi and Levy, okay? I've been watching and following the news over the past few years concerning Sholem Rabashkin. What I have noticed is that each individual to the person involved in this criminal case seems to feel that they have more credibility and are more trustworthy than Rabashkin could ever be. So I was wondering. It appears that no one in the Sholem uh, Mordechai Rabashkin criminal case has any idea of what the firm Jewish world, its culture, and the traditional interpretation and application of the laws and ethics of the written and oral Torah are all about. I also believe that they have no idea why 27% of Israeli Jews and 10% of the Jewish population in the United States who are religious Jews smell a rat in the Rabashkin case. In other words, they're totally clueless. Right? They don't understand what Jews are, and they don't understand why Jews smell a rat. Okay? She continues, the Torah Jews each know that Sholem Rabashkin, along with his father's help, they could have asked the religious community to invest in their company, and they would have never had to use a bank, any bank. The Rabashkins have so much credibility in the Hasidic community until no one, not even the judge, the prosecutor, the investigators, uh, per trail, I don't know what that means, probation, etc., could come close to commanding the level and trust and honor that the Rabashkins still have amongst those who they know. Could the judge, the prosecutor in the case, go out and raise enough money to even defend themselves in a case like, like this, much less borrow enough money to build another packing house and start all over again? I'm just asking, do they even understand why they can never have a level of trust and credibility among their communities that the Rubushkins command among theirs? The Rubushkins could not have defaulted on a bank loan because they could have always come to their community for help and gotten it in a New York minute. No matter what, Thus, even though the Rabushkins were lax in their use of monies that the bank had loaned them, the Rabushkins always knew that the bank would be paid back. 
So to say that, you know, I think the point is to say that, you know, they defaulted on a loan and they're criminals doesn't make sense because they would have gotten the money from somebody. As we see, that everybody supports them. The only reason the bank didn't get paid back is because anyone, this is very important, the only reason that the bank didn't get paid is because anyone who wanted to help the Rubashkins were intimidated at first by the judge and the prosecutor in the case, and then were afraid to step forward and say, this man would never have defaulted if you had not planned how to trip him up and force him into the default. What do you think of those? What do you think of those like, allegations? Reminds me of this black girl on you. <laughs> <laughs> Way to ruin the segment, lady. Way to ruin the segment. This this segment's gonna go viral. Everybody's gonna be watching this all everywhere, and you're gonna be they're gonna be like, oh, and that's Lady going up with the with the black chicks. Great. Way, way to ruin the segment. Way to ruin your career. Like everything else that you've done. Alright, can I go on to the next email? So that's the first one. Thank you, Rachel. I read your email on there. The other one comes in from a Yankee. And uh, I'm not going to quote him verbatim, but basically he discovered a whole new conflict. Like, uh, let, let's just wrap up what we've had the last couple of weeks. Two weeks ago we discovered, uh, we discussed uh, the Burger King bailout. Remember that? We talked about the Burger King bailout because the judge in the case, the one who um, uh, uh, presided over the Rubushkin case and, and gave him the verdict in 27 years, she has a conflict of interest list, and on that conflict of interest list was Goldman Sachs. And Goldman Sachs is heavily invested in Burger King, right? And, and Burger King had um, uh, issues with um, taking advantage of, of its employees and so to deflect the, um, you could say that to deflect the attention away from Burger King's problems, let's go uh, find it, somebody else, let's throw the Jew down the well, right? We were saying that the last couple of weeks, right? Let's throw Grabashkin down the well cause, and say that he's also got taking advantage of, of, of his employees, right? So because of that, because she's heavily invested in Burger King, and you could say that, so you see that there's a potential conflict of interest because it's the appearance of impropriety. In the following week, last week, we talked about how it even gets worse. Because Burger King's only the number two fast food restaurant, and Goldman Sachs isn't that huge of a company. And last week, we talked about Chase uh, Bank, who, JP Morgan Chase, who I believe is the biggest bank in America. And they were heavily involved in the investment of the biggest meat industry, in, in uh, biggest meat conglomerate in the world. It's called JBS Swift. And Swift, if for those who remember, was busted by immigration officials in the United States because they had 1,200 illegal aliens. Yet nobody in SWIFT went, went to prison for 27 years like Rabashkin did, right? So you see that there's something fishy going on. Like, you know, this woman wrote, Ruckel wrote, there's a rat. We smell a rat because something doesn't add up here. Something right? smells fishy. Something smells fishy in the meat industry. And, um, okay, so that's that's the story with, with that. So we had the conflict of interest because J.P. Morgan is on the judge's conflict of interest list, just like Goldman Sachs. J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs are heavily invested, and you can make the case that that they there is reason to believe that there would be favoritism. Uh, uh, in her advantage, she would have a financial gain if to send Rubashkin down the well, to send uh, the the media and the government and everybody after the Jew which she's not invested in with at all, that's the competition, and she would stay with her, uh, she would, you know, uh, take a financial gain from that. She has gained financially by sending him down the well, by closing out agri-processors. Even if it wasn't her intention, there is at least the appearance of impropriety. Remember that, you know what I was thinking, I wanted to add to this real quickly, right? Is that, um, you know, in baseball, you're not, you're not allowed to bet. If you're like, you remember Pete Rose got kicked out of baseball? Yeah. And, and you're not allowed to, to, to bet on teams if you're like involved in baseball. Yeah. Right? But he never, it wasn't like he threw the game. Yeah. He bet on himself. He bet on yeah. his own team. So, like, I, you know, what's the problem? Exactly. Well, what is the problem, lady? You know what the problem with that is? Impropriety. It looks bad. It looks bad. You know why it looks bad? Because you're the manager. Yeah, you could, you know, you could throw a pitcher in. And... Bingo! You could, you manipulate the pitching order. So, the nights that you're taking your team, you know, some nights you don't have a bet going. But the nights you have your, you're taking your team are the nights that you put in your pitcher. That means on other nights you might be more tempted to lose. See, it's the appearance of impropriety. 
you're, 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 it doesn't look right, you know, and it's, and, it, and it's bad for baseball, right? It's bad for baseball, and that's why Pete Rose is never going to get in the Hall of Fame. I don't know what, but the point is, um, it's the appearance of impropriety. It's when your competition, you're, you know, you don't want, you don't want, you don't want if, like, you know, you, you play for the Lakers, right? You don't want the judge in the case to be a Celtics fan. Right? You're going up because he's going to put you in jail just so, you know, his, the competition. You know, that doesn't make any sense. So that, just because, uh, you know, the, we're not talking about somebody who's owned by them, you know, like, like a Celtic was going up. That would be a case of conflict of interest. But even if a Laker was going up in front of a, a Celtic judge, it's a conflict of interest because it's the competition. Okay, so that's easily explainable. So Yankee wrote in and he said he discovered a whole new conflict, a third conflict in addition to those two. And he's still working on it, and we'll hopefully be able to share it next week with maybe. So we have something to look forward to next week. Is that uh, Yankee's got a whole new conflict. But before then, uh, you you should all, I say you should all uh, prepare for it by watching two videos. So, and you can do so by going to your YouTube search and type in the, the phrase, Rubashkin Lawyer Speaks at a Gouda Dinner. Have you watched these videos? That's a two-part video series. I was busy watching all the videos. Yeah, yeah, I know all about your videos. Rubashkin Lawyer speaks at a Gouda dinner. Okay, and everybody should watch that. I'm going to post the links to the videos tomorrow on the Torah Talks fan page on Facebook. And all of you should, of course, join that. If you're not part of it, then you're just completely missing out. So if you're on Facebook, find us at Torah Talks fan page. Uh, the Torah Talks fan page with Rabbi Rabs and, and Luke Ford. If you're not part of Facebook, you should join it just for that. It's That's that's our home. Um, and I would also say that you should please, everybody watching this should please mention this request that I made. To anyone you know who might be interested in the Raboshkin case, tell them where they can find us on YouTube. Tell us where they can tune in next week because we are the home, maybe. We are Raboshkin Central. This is where people are coming to with, with their information, their hot tips. Okay? So you're talking about bailouts. Yes. Different times in my life have I been bailed out by Oriental World. Just... I think the segment that's going to be used to go viral just ended. Because <laughs> this isn't going to want to be on it. Okay. Because, like, I've been down and out. I've been struggling. I've been going through some tough times. And there's just, like, a nurturing quality in an Oriental woman. It's often not there with the white woman, the Latino woman, and even the black woman. Like there's just like a soft, gentle, nurturing quality that, that many Oriental women have. And also they have a way of just squeezing you tight. They just like <laughs> wrap you up in their love.